for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be going through the different types of maintenance that you should be giving your cornic eggs to avoid issues. It may or may not surprise you to know that a large amount of CO2 leaks and problems users can face are down to poor or no maintenance. Maintenance should not be confused with cleaning either. This is a totally separate topic and I've covered this with a different guide on my channel as shown in the bottom right of the screen now. So let's get started. Firstly, here is a quick guide as to what you will need for this maintenance. As you can already see, you will need a tube of food safe lubricant. These can also be marked as sanitary. This lubricant is used on our seals. Not only does this enable the seals to obtain a better bond, it also protects them giving them a longer life. This cheap and easy to use stuff can often be the difference between a leak and a CO2 tight system. Do not underestimate it. Having a good stock of replacement parts before you actually know you're going to need them is a really good idea. I would recommend having at least two fully replacement posts for both the beer and gas ports, plus a selection of o-rings, washers, poppets, pressure relief valves, and also keg lift feet. These can be bought in a complete kit form as shown in many different homebrew stores. Just remember to replace what you use as you go to ensure that you always have things covered. There is nothing worse than having a keg out of service because you do not have the parts to get it back and functional. Next you are going to need some tools like a spanner or a wrench depending on where you are from or a deep socket like this one. These are used to remove the keg posts. Personally I recommend the socket method as they tend to be kinder on the posts than using a spanner and also are easier all round. The size that you will need will depend on your type of corny keg post. Here in Europe most of my kegs require 17mm but I also have some requiring 22 In the US you can be looking at sizing between 11 sixteenths of an inch to 7 eighths of an inch. When choosing a socket, look at the amount of edges you have on your corny keg post and match this up to the socket type for a good fit. And lastly you will need a flathead screwdriver which will be used to remove the outside o-rings on the posts. Here is a quick look at everything together as mentioned, let's now run through the maintenance. Before running through the steps involved in maintenance, let's start with some good advice. Firstly, do replace your seals every two years as a minimum, or if you obtain a used keg, replace the seals straight away unless it is reconditioned, and of course these will have already been replaced. Naturally you may find that you need to replace the seals before two years. Be sure to give them a visual inspection each time you clean the keg and look out for wear and tear. It is certainly going to be a lot cheaper to replace a seal than replace a whole CO2 bottle, even if you are using the cheaper soda stream kind, not to mention the stress and inconvenience you will save yourself. Ok, let's get started. Firstly use the PRV on the keg to ensure that all pressure is removed. It is important that you do this because it is then safe for you to take off the top lid, which is coming next. You can then start by removing and checking the largest o-ring featured on the corny keg. Be very thorough in your examination and if you see any damage then simply replace it. This o-ring performs a very important seal between your lid and keg. It must be kept clean and sanitary and it is important to give this a full coating of lube before reattaching it to a new keg of beer. Staying with the lids, you should next remove the pressure release valve. The pressure release valve is your last line of safety and a vital item for the user to routinely check. Like with any pressure vessel, this is the user's responsibility to check because if it is worn or blocked by debris and fails to work, then you risk an explosion. Be sure to give this important piece of safety equipment a very good check, including the seal, replacing anything that is looking visually compromised. And now the last check on your lid. An often forgotten part of corny keg maintenance is to check the lid feet. Over time these will certainly wear down and in the end they will not allow for a nice tight fit to your keg's lid. Do note that it is normal to see some marks on these as shown here. I suggest checking these with a touch test to feel how worn they are. When in doubt replace them. Like all these parts they are not expensive. Let's next remove your keg serving post. This will be indicated usually with the word out marked on your keg within the surrounding black moulding. You can see me doing this with a socket here. This will not take many turns and after this I tend to unscrew the last turn or so of the post with my fingers. Once this is fully unscrewed then carefully remove the post along with the dip tube attached fully out of your corny keg. I then suggest that you gently separate them by turning the liquid post upside down. This will keep the spring and pop it inside the post rather than them falling on your floor. You will then have the following three parts. 
Starting with the dip tube, inspect the seal at the end. This should be visually intact or it will need to be replaced. Either way, be sure to add some lube to it. Next, also take a look at the poppet and spring. Start by giving these a visual inspection for wear and tear. Replace any of these items that look less than ideal. Naturally, the seal at the end of the poppet is the most likely to wear first and it is much easier to replace the entire poppet rather than actually replacing the tiny seal, if you can even find them. Seeing as poppet in English is also a term of affection, this should be not much of a hardship. Naturally, it is vital that this seal is also given the lube treatment before carefully lying it up in the post and attaching it back onto your keg. And then lastly, give the o-ring on your post a good inspection. This o-ring is the most liable to wear, and due to this I strongly suggest using lube on it every time a ball lock connector is removed from it. Because it is the most liable for wear, it is also the one that is most commonly the cause of leaks. To remove this o-ring, personally I use a screwdriver and patience. I believe that having a screwdriver with a thin flat edge that you can wedge under the o-ring to remove it is the key here. Some will employ the use of other tools to remove this particular o-ring, including pointed instruments like dental picks. As long as you can remove the o-ring without causing the post damage, then really it matters not what you use here. Next, let's remove the other post. This is the side of the keg marked in and is where your CO2 line is connected. Once again, when removing this post, try to keep the parts together. Here is an even closer look at what you should now have. Start off by separating the tube from the rest of the post, being careful to have control over the spring and poppet. As previously, carry out your visual inspections and once again replace parts as needed along with applying lube to all o-rings and seals. Then you should put the whole thing back together again, add water to the top fill line and then add pressure. There are now four areas of the keg where we need to check for leaks. Firstly, these are both of the posts, which includes the outer area where the post is screwed into the keg, and also here where the poppet forms a seal in the middle of the post. In addition to these two areas, you must also check the entire circumference of where the lid joins the keg. And lastly, check that the all-important pressure release now has no leaks. The easy way to do this leak testing is to spray the area you are checking with either diluted foaming sanitizer, soapy water, or a purpose-made liquid leak detecting product like Snoop. If you see enlarging bubbles, then this is a key indicator of trouble, and you will need to take action until it is resolved. Certainly you will want to be doing these tests before you end your maintenance ahead of transfer of your homebrew. If you would like to discuss this topic further or ask questions, then please use the comment section available in this video. You can also head to this YouTube channel's Facebook group. Links to join are shared on screen for those who are not already members. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!